Hello, everyone, and welcome to Performa Jam. Um, very excited to uh, be here and to be hosting. My name is Alden Rivendale Jones. Um, so tonight um, is a very special event that's hosted um, both by um, Adjacent Journal, which is um, a journal of emerging media out of um, the Interactive Telecommunications Program in, in uh, uh, at NYU, and um, uh, um, uh, Culture Hub, which is um, uh, <laughs> um, uh, which uh, you probably know very well as you're watching the uh, watching their stream. Um, so um, uh, tonight we have a variety of performers um, using a variety of different mediums. Um, and um, but what's particularly important about the performances that are tonight is that they've all been made over the course of just today. Um, so each performance will be five minutes. Uh, performers started working on their performances at noon today. And um, uh, I, I'm quite excited to see them. Um, uh, so the performances were all made around the theme of energy vampire. Um, so keep that in mind as you watch each performance. Um, now, each performance also should only be five minutes long. Um, if they start to go over time, um, you'll hear Enya start to play. Um, so performers, keep that in mind. Um, if you hear Enya, um, cut, your <laughs> cut your performance. It's basically the audio equivalent of getting pulled off of stage um, with, a, um, with a cane, um, like they did back in vaudeville times. Um, so um, with that, I would like to give it up to our first performer of the evening, uh, Billy. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Um, for me, it was all about loss and death of the things I love just for now. Amazing. All right. All right. So we'll welcome our next performer. Yeah. Oh, is there any?
Okay, thank you and sorry for watching. Uh, come, <laughs> come up to party time. Because uh, I'm watching my uh, really chat that I'm going to see this. It's funny. It's funny. Thank you. Thank you, Pai, who's celebrating. Who's celebrating today. Um. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. You're like, <laughs> sorry, he's a real star. That was fantastic. Um, oh, no. How did you? How did you? How did you find such capable, oh. such a capable um, performer to help you in this in this time? Um, I, I was I was lucky actually. This guy, he, his first performance at an actual performance gallery was two months old, so he's like experienced. Um, that's fantastic. Um, and so it's also. It's also a birthday today, right? Yeah, it's free. Wow. <laughs> uh, that's great. Um, so, of course, I have to ask you the important question, which is, uh, what does energy vampire mean to you? Um, and how and <laughs> how has that sh how has that uh, shaped your day? Oh man, oh, uh, this is such a such a close to my heart. I I feel like energy vampire is just like sucking on my blood every day and same same me i'm being the energy vampire of you right now just like taking up taking up your your time and attention and like what what for what what even for you know <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally um yeah i mean i feel like i feel like in part we wanted to, we chose this theme because um there seem to be so many things that we're sucking all of our energy um, these days. Um, I mean, staying at home, um, being one, um, being quarantined, another, just like Zoom, being in Zoom meetings all the time. Um, um, <laughs> Morning. Do you, do you have any final words from you and your um, you and your assistant? Well, that was a disturb disturbing uh, start, I guess, after oh, Billy's no. uh, uh, musical <laughs> intro. <laughs> no, it was great. Try, try um, something more wackier. Let's go. Uh, All right, we're still waiting for our next performer. Um, 
and thank you for organizing this. Of course. Um, yeah, we're very excited to be doing it. I think, and I think um, it seemed to be the right thing to be doing right now. I mean, there's like so much, there's like so little opportunity generally for <laughs> live performance, like in the world at large. And so in some ways moving to digital actually like provides more opportunities. But um, um, yeah, so we really wanted to experiment and play in the space. All right. Um, looks like we have our next performer uh, ready to go. Um, uh, Max, are you ready? Good. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, Elizabeth. One more round of applause. Um, um, yeah, we're all set. All right. To welcome our next performer, uh, Max. We'll give it to you. You're choosing freeconferencehall.com. You're helping people around the world communicate for free. Please enter your access code followed by the pound or hash sign. If you are the host, press star now. Otherwise, please wait. Please enter your pin followed by the pound or hash. Thank you. You are the only participant in the conference. <laughs>
John. But I have to say, conference um, call, what an inspired choice for energy vampire. Data. Um, <laughs> and so um, uh, I just, I before, before you run off, um, I, I have one question for you. Of course, conference yeah. call makes perfect sense. But how yeah. did you, how did you find exploring this, this medium through the day as you, as you, as you worked on it and like maybe at what point did you decide on the conference call as the as the tool honestly uh pretty late like we got this the prompt last night and it didn't really come to me until like we had already started meeting today i've sort of done stuff around the free conference call before um yeah. usually like involving like a group activity of like planning the piece together um but it seemed like a good, like the energy vampire thing for me <laughs> is very like this weird feeling of like being with people, but not being with people. And that like weird tension of like, you're together, but you're not actually, and it's hard to actually feel together in that weird fake digital space. Yeah, and completely. Play with that. Yeah, no, it's it wonderful choice, and uh, thank you, thank you for um, <laughs> thank you for choosing it. Um, of course, Sorry, I didn't get to hear the Enya when I went long. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Um, so, um, thank you, Max. A round of applause as we sit in our in our living rooms and bedrooms uh, watching this. Um, and uh, just to check in with our next performer, Matt. Matt, are you uh, ready to go? Matt. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Matt, if you're ready, give a thumbs up. No, not yet. Okay. Um, well, in that case, Max, I have another question for you. Um, which, uh, is just, go for it. <laughs> which is just, um, how have you found making work, uh, making work um, in quarantine times, I, 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 I'm asking because I recently saw uh, an, an Onion article that um, the headline of which was um, something along the lines of a "Local man doesn't understand why he thought the most psychologically traumatic time of his life uh, would mm -hmm. be be a great moment to um, to become productive again." Yeah. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I mean that's exactly it. Um... It's a lot, there's, there's plenty of free time um, and all these projects that I've wanted to work on forever. Um, and it's a lot of like, you know, there's like eight things that I've wanted to do like as soon as I had the free time for however long. And now it's just a matter of like trying to do eight of them at once and instead doing none of them. Um, <laughs> like trying to, trying to run in two directions at once and instead just standing still. But yeah, you know, getting through it, having yeah. fun. Completely. 
the the doing eight things at once and not and finding that it's actually like i'm not getting any of them done that's extremely relatable for me and i think for like many people um because in some ways it seems like such a perfect time to like capitalize on you know you can't go out and hang out with people you can't go do many of the normal things you'd ordinarily be doing in your day to day um mm. so that seems like it would free up a lot of time but then i think and think i've replaced all that time and then some with just anxious sitting and so mm -hmm. sit. yep i'll just, just sit sitting and, and waiting <laughs> for like refreshing my phone obsessively <laughs> yeah exactly yeah i had to delete twitter from my phone because i um because it was <laughs> that was just like making me giving me that was enabling my anxious sitting yeah um, that's a good idea yeah i have let's check in, let's, yeah. all right one second yeah, let's check in with time. matt matt are you um you're good to go everything's okay. ready all right um all right well thank you max um and i'll totally. see you on the other side and we'll, and with that we'll go to uh matt Sorry, I mean, I, I would, I muted myself, uh, which is probably good because I was just talking about how much I love this boombox I got on eBay. Um, so when I when I got the twelve hundred dollar um, st stimulus money in my bank account, um, you know, I asked myself what what what's the best way I can spend it. You know, I thought like student loans. Um, should I pay off my student loans? Um, credit card debt. And then I realized that no, none of that was important. What actually I needed to do was buy um, a, a boombox from the 1980s um, that could play cassettes. And um, well, that's exactly what I did. Um, okay, Matt, are you ready? Matt's ready, wonderful. All right, Matt, we'll go to you. Matt, are you muted? All right. We'll have to skip Matt for now um, uh, because he's having audio issues, which is very unfortunate. Um, it looks very fun in his um, in his um and with that we'll move to aaron yeah aaron yeah i can't hear you at all um Hey, hey, hey. Oh, wonderful. All right. Now to Aaron and Luna.
fantastic um, um so just to just to um first an announcement for those of you just tuning in um this is the live stream of performance jam an evening of um of uh short performances uh prepared in just a what six hour time span um uh, on the theme of Energy Vampire, co-hosted by Adjacent, the Journal of Emerging Media, out of um, one out of the Interactive Telecommunications Program of NYU, and um, Culture Hub. Um, so um, with that, Aron um, and Luna, I, I would uh, so um, uh, 
you know, <laughs> I'm almost at a loss for words. There was so much going on. And I, well, one, one thing I'm curious about is, um, did you actually just get a haircut or was it, because I, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm over in the hair. Yeah, it's yeah. Me <laughs> Incredible. Um, and um, that's wonderful. Um, you know, I, I, I don't want to complain, but my, <laughs> but I had a haircut scheduled for just the first week of quarantine. And of course it, it had to get canceled. And I don't mind growing my hair out right now. I actually think it's I actually think it's working, but I'm a, it, I, you know, I would <laughs> I would love to be able to get a, a nice haircut right now. Um, it's, it's still little um, to get a, a, a nice haircut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, um, yeah, I was just curious, like how how was working working collaboratively um, over the day and. Um, when did you come up with this concept and, and sort of like how did the haircut what how did the haircut first emerge as the form you wanted wanted this performance to take um we are in thesis time so i was thinking i need to get a haircut i need to finish all these things and then my machine starts to break down over time like the, the battery is really messed up so the the thing about energy falling over time was like the connection to you know what, let's see this machine fall while I try to get a haircut and, and me being an energy buyer of this beautiful black $20 machine from the dollar store. <laughs> um, Luna was, uh, is close and she always cuts my hair, so it seemed the, the perfect collaboration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, wonderful. Um, I, yeah, I, I, you know, I think I've heard the term energy vampire used to describe sort of things like plugs and adapters that have been left plugged into the wall, even though they're no longer charging something. So it seems very fitting that you would use the clippers, the clippers in that way, because, um, of course, like if you're charging them or if you have it plugged in when they're not, if, when it's, they're not running, um, then there's going to be slowly draining energy. So it's it's yeah there's like so many angles in which it's appropriate um, um so um let's just check in on our next performer uh jessica are you ready to go okay uh one more so uh, a round of applause for aaron uh, aaron and luna thank you um a wonderful job <laughs> um, and with that, we'll go to Jessica. All right. <laughs> awesome. Well, hi everyone. Um, this is a little different from um, some of the other performances. I actually kind of wanted to talk through um, this generative poetry that um, I was working on today. So it'll be part like reading, but also part um, explanation of like how this is all constructed. So um, where I just was, was like the editor view of this. Um, and I wanted to, yeah, um, I wanted to read through just this poem that um, was generated just now. So, cells themselves can gain totipotency, working on the wind, familiar scenes that with another student of our love was possible. If we're in a sticky rewind button and an changing direction at the speechless hominids staring at the water glory be in the act of whatever is holding our today are you sorry right now last year in our tension right now every sunday night proves it and i for the love but then something good we start off life totipotent the earth it is the last time we exert a state of all i remember not wanting it our you would want then there was possible we start off life totipotent, wishful thinking. Um, so I realized that the this whole thing um, isn't doesn't read fully coherent 
um, but it was generated from a handful of texts that or writings that I've been thinking a lot about during this time. Um, so I wanted to highlight this piece about Carly Rae Jepsen, um, where the author talks about totipotency and the sense of possibility um, and how her music kind of evokes um, a similar sense of that. Um, and then another thing I wanted to highlight was, oops, Octavia Butler's, um, this is from her piece, um, I think a few rules for predicting the future. Um, so I was really struck by this one quote, because most of all, our tomorrow is a child of our today. Through thought and deed, we exert a great deal of influence over this child, even though we can't control it absolutely. Best to think about it though, best to try to shape it into something good, best to do that for any child. Um, and reading this, like, well, like, I guess the, the statement in itself is both like really recognizable, but also I think like really was really profound for me. Um, this is kind of what I named my project after. So the project's called of yesterday um, and the idea is that every time I click through it generates um, poems from a couple of the texts that I put together um, yeah so it's called of yesterday because um, I like found myself almost like wishing I was religious or spiritual um, or that like there was some kind of like um, body of religion that fall so that I could turn to something like bigger than myself um, like rid of uncertainty um, or confusion. And then I realized like what I was actually looking for um, was like poetry and things that remind me of kind of the generative nature of the word and word at the same time. And I feel like kind of all the way that this project was in um, that it almost like in just takes in the text that you give it and then it finds new ways um, it, like it it looks at what we already know so in this case um, the essays and the poems that I gave it and then it creates something new from it so I've been thinking about that as like a frame for um, I guess how I want to approach this time going forward like there there's a sense of maybe like drain that comes in being in the same environment but I think this also presents an interesting opportunity um, yeah so a couple more poems, let's see. Yeah, okay, so. I'm going to go to some of the ones that I found or I got earlier today. So I don't know if this actually does. Cool. Um, but Best to stay on the amphibians. The earth, it is storytelling in the water. Glory be, tis the child. There's no sorrow now. We sense our lost totipotency only at the earth. It is fossils learning to try to that for a miracle. Best to knit itself out toward infinity. Best to that heartbeat but the sun. Our love was a miracle. Cells themselves can regain totipotency. Our love. Are you sorry right now? try to shape but try to try to try to shape absolutely um and then the companion piece <laughs> the first time machine it is a state that one cell turned into something good total potency is a state that for thinking um you sorry right now total potency is a degrading 37 trillion that anything is fossil is learning to knit itself out toward infinity Cells themselves can regain totipotency, only in touch with learning to shape it, our love. All of the rewind button, where anything has a new kind of influence over the totipotency is fossils learning to knit itself toward infinity. Because our potential and deed, we were anything, is the means by which they do so remain a cult. We that refuse to think, ready to think, is something good. Um, yeah, and then from there, wanted to highlight exactly. 
um, and it's in a model called Markov, like a Markov chain model. Um, and this kind of model basically looks for ways that words are already linked together and then links to those links together. Um, so it's kind of an interesting taking what we know and projecting it outward. Um, yeah, <laughs> which is the overall. Thank you, Jessica. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, the, 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 yeah. um, <laughs> and it means that unfortunately your time, um, your time is up, but, um, yeah, that was perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that was perfect timing. Um, but yeah, thank you for the poems. Awesome. Um, and what, um, and so, um, um, uh, yeah, what, um, Formally, what what inspired you to choose poetry as your as your medium today? Yeah, totally, totally. Um, kind of uh, what I had brought up earlier, this idea of like wishing that I was like religious or like wanting wanting mm -hmm. to feel some kind of like transcendence, and then like revisiting some of my favorite poets and like some of my favorite essays and realizing like. Um, that I guess like maybe for me at the moment, like poetry kind of serves as my religion. And so wanting to then take this source of what brings me comfort and try to um, create something new from what's familiar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, the desire to be to be religious, I feel um, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's somewhat I feel like I've felt that at times or sort of like I've wished for some sort of like spiritual practice mm -hmm. or like having some kind of mm -hmm. like spiritual experience. Yeah, um, yeah. But um, I was, of course, I was raised by, um, uh, with with enough, enough lapsed Catholic guilt that I feel like that almost makes up for any kind of spiritual or religious <laughs> because um, yeah. you know, I have to, I have enough of that. And I feel like, you know, sometimes I occasionally find myself wishing for like something more or like something more intensely um, uh, meaningful. And then I remember, I, <laughs> and then I remember all of the guilt that I have and I'm like, oh no, it's okay. I've got it covered. I don't need that anymore. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, thank you, um, thank you for your work today. Um, and um, let's see if uh, our next performer is ready. So, um, Yi Tang, um, um, if you're ready, and um, um, when you're ready, give me a thumbs up. Okay, looks already. All right, Jessica, thank you again. Oh, oh. Not ready. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> in that case, um, um, Jessica, another question for you. So you, I, um, before you run off, have you still here? Oh, she's not here anymore. All right, which means you get to. Well, maybe that's not such a bad thing because it means that you'll get to hear more about my delightful cassette player. Um, so one of the things that I didn't even really think would be um, would be as useful of a function as it is, and the sort of like maybe speaks to my na my naivete about um, these like older um, analog mediums. But so it has this function of um, doing an auto reverse. So it says right there. I know you can't really see it, but um, it does auto reverse. So that means that if I'm listening to the side A of a cassette. And it reaches the end of the cassette tape, it'll just automatically start playing side B. Okay. Um, so, um, which is, I know, is fascinating stuff. So, yeah. Uh, Yiting and um, uh, Oliver Rose, are you ready? All right. They're ready. All right. Is your OBS? Which part? No, it's not showing. No. Oh. 
Well, we wait a second for that. Sure. All right, while we wait a second for them to get ready, um, let's see. I um, <laughs> um, I could talk a little bit more about this. Or, um, I don't know, that might be a bit boring. Um, There's a variety of things that I that like um, I purchased or somehow obtained in the in the days before the um, the quarantine that I found like unexpectedly useful. Um, the first one, of course, is is a high quality webcam. So I feel like I just sort of like basically on a whim decided to buy a really expensive webcam, um, which you know maybe this was in like mid February, and I didn't even realize that that would become the rest. Uh, so much of my next life um, that I would just basically be living in my webcam. Um, Do it this way. Sorry about that. Um, okay, looks like they're getting ready. Before they start, okay. though, I want to I want to shout out one more thing that I acquired, which is. I think my sister gave this to me. It's a little bird, but it's actually a, has like a, a, a ceramic box cutter on the very tip. And um, little did I know how many packages I'd be receiving. Um, so, um, okay, we're ready. All right. Cool. All right. Ready for Yitting and Oliver Rose. Something bears under the entire undersea of the earth. Something bears under the entire undersea of the Something bears under the entire Something bears under the entire undersea of the earth. Something bears under the entire undersea of the earth. Something 
Um, thank you, both of you. That was wonderful. Uh, thank you. How did um, you know? It's it's like it's. <laughs> um, I feel like it's so hard to do collaborations, but the fact that you were doing this collaboration remotely, um, how did you make that work? And how did you? And what kind of difficulties did you find doing it? Um, we basically brainstormed given the concept of energy vampire, and then we had word association, and then we figured out which part we were interested in, and I'm interested in the audio part, and Oliver Rose is very interested in visual part, and we sort of wanted to collaborate in between the visual and audio, so I shot some footages of me doing some mundane things that Oliver Rose can incorporate in the visuals, and he also sent me some um, audio clips of him talking, singing, and doing a lot of things. So I actually like this kind of collaboration. <laughs> um, yeah, it sounds great. Um, I, um, yeah, it's better. I feel like, um, yeah, how did you feel with the time constraint? Did it, did it help or did it hurt? Uh... <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, well, you, yeah. you did a great job, <laughs> both of you. Very good job. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, for our pick... concept. Oh, go ahead. Oh, so um, our concept from the Energy Vampire is to uh, elaborate how everyday feels like the same. So we basically incorporated um, sound elements and footages that are happening basically daily. And in terms of my sound elements, I chose some mundane activities like cooking, eating, drinking, and I compiled them into a drum rack and then used that as my drum bass. Mm -hmm. And cool. Oliver, do you want to talk about the footages? Cool. Yeah. Well, I'm happy that I'm happy that you're able to make this work. Um, I think it's really good. Um, 
Thank yeah, you so do you much have any, for <laughs> Do you have any plans? Are you longtime collaborators or do you, or was this your first time? And do you have any plans on collaborating in the future? Definitely. This is wild. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Cool. Um, awesome. Let's check in with our next performer. Um, before uh, Matt, are you uh, ready to go? This is Matt's next chance. Matt's ready to go. All right, wonderful. So another round of applause for uh, Yeting and Alvaroz. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you both. And then we'll go to Matt. Thank you. 
Just to say again, for those of us just joining us, this is the Performa Jam stream, um, a night of, uh, of five-minute performances, all made in a, a span of six hours, um, and uh, hosted by um, the adjacent journal of emerging media, uh, run out of the interactive telecommunications program of NYU, um, which you can read um, here at this URL http colon slash slash adjacent dot press um and um which i'm only shouting out so much because um, matt here is uh, one of adjacent's um uh star editors um and so <laughs> um matt um uh, I would I, so I would like to um, I would like to ask you uh, like I've been asking all the performers um, first off just what has what has energy vampire meant to you um, and how did it how did it fit into uh, your performance now? Uh, yeah, you can hear me right. Yes, you yeah. can hear me right. Okay, yeah. perfect. Uh, yeah, so we had we had some microphone issues earlier, but I think for energy vampire for me has gotten me thinking about our weird relationship with energy i think the words extrovert and introvert typically people think of like how people get their energy within being in the house versus being around other people and i feel like these traditional roles and sources of energies just all the rules feel like they've broken down over the past couple of months and i think it's had a very strange effect on sort of how a lot of us have been going about our routines and sort of how we've been perceiving time and kind of like getting energy. And so for me, energy vampires sort of been around this kind of strange thread of like anxiety and energy going through all of our brains. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. And, and look at his face. <laughs> <laughs> Where does it come from? Where's the sample? I it's, you know, it sounds something about it sounds so familiar. Um, but I can't actually place it. It's interesting that's what you called out because for me the uh, during this time this the part of the sample that always looks uh, interesting to me is uh, go get a doctor. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's sort of I, I picked the sample from an old nineteen uh, twenties film, and it's sort of think, thinking about you know every um, sci fi horror movie uh, dis I mean disaster movie begins with people ignoring a scientist. So I found this and sort of felt like. Oh yeah, like go to get a doctor. Do you see what this person is talking about? Totally, um, completely appropriate to this moment. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, good choice. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, uh, Matt. Before I let you go, let's check in with um, our next performer, Tundi. Tundi, are you ready? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Um, all right, Tundi is ready. So, uh, Matt, thank you. A uh, round of applause for Matt. A wonderful performance. Um, and Matt will let you go and uh, hand it over to Tindy. I'm here to talk to you about something I'm calling Design Life Well. You can check it out at designlifewell.com. And today I'm going to be talking about purpose statements and how to find your purpose in five minutes or less. We all want to do that. And so my piece is going to be a little bit different, but this is definitely aimed at creative professionals and I am one myself. So hopefully this is helpful to you guys. So most people ask, what do you do? And the issue is that this is a hard question for some of us. Um, you know, what if you're in between things? What if you're vulnerable? What if what you are doing isn't really what you want to be doing? What if what you're getting paid to do isn't really what you are? Um, or what if people are saying it in kind of a malicious way? What if they're just asking you just to see if they want to actually talk to you? Or what if they're just asking so that they can, you know, brag that they're, what they're doing is so much cooler than you? So if you figure out your purpose and coming up with a purpose statement, it really helps you in a lot of ways. It helps your elevator pitch. It helps to spark conversations. And it can also help others uh, figure out what they want to do as well. 
So what happens if you don't know what you, what you do and you don't know what your purpose is? One, others will tune out because they don't want to spend time figuring it out. Two, they don't want to tell others what you do because you don't know either and they really don't understand. Others won't trust you because they don't just don't get it. And they won't end up buying anything from you, hiring you, or helping you to get anything that you need because they just simply won't trust you. So we can all agree that the unexamined life is not worth living. So there's five ways to figure this out. Who you are, what you do, who you do it for, what those people want and need, and how they change as a result. So I'm just going to go through these really quickly. So one, what is it that you love to do? It could be anything. For me, it's designing. I love to design. It could also be writing, coding, teaching, cooking, talking, whatever. Second, who do you do it for? Who are the people that you serve? Who do you do it for? Who's helped by this thing that you do? Three, what do they want or need that they come specifically to you to do? So what is the exact thing that makes you unique and different? What do other people need? So name the thing that you actually help them with. And then five is how can they change or transform as a result of what you provide them? What are they getting out of it? So those are five quick things that you want to answer. And if you put it all together, it's my, our, unique adjective or product service, blank, what others will get or accomplish so that blank, your product or service, how they can help other people. So some examples of it are, our organic soy candles provide peace and coziness, so you can make a home feel like a home. Another example is our friendly design system helps you without a need to code so that you can post work fast without worry. Our sugar-free cupcakes still indulge after dinner so that you can celebrate without feeling bad. And our eco-friendly tech air filter helps to safely clean the air so that you can live without worry. You guys get it, right? Really quick and easy, but it helps people quickly understand what you do. And it helps other people to, to speak to you as well with, about what they do clearly. So I wanted just to, to explain this to you guys because as a creative, it's sometimes difficult to put into perspective what we do. And understanding what you do and what others do really quickly helps everybody. So I really wanted to point this out to you all, and I hope that this is helpful. Um, I'm just going to wrap this up by saying, uh, if you can just, if you want to find a lot more info on this, I'm launching something specifically for creatives, um, either at ITP or anywhere else, um, to design a career that you're wildly proud of. Uh, I, you know, I doubled my income in under a year as a creative. And a lot of people have been asking me about that. So I put together a quick PDF on that and happy to help you guys. If you also want to email me, it's hello at designlifewell.com. That's it. Thank you, Tundi. Thanks. Um, so Tundi, I had, um, I guess, of course, Okay, before I ask you any questions, something this something that I really like about this is that I recently um, saw a call, um, an artist call for works that um, that uh, were meant to um, create pathways towards like actionable change, and you know I was thinking like, well, that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't describe my practice. Um, I feel like you know maybe if if um, if anything that I would be making. Were it, <laughs> were it all actionable, that that would seem almost bizarre. And so something I like about this is that you're you're sort of like providing a rubric for people to actually make like actionable change um, um, in their lives. Yeah. And so um, um, what um, so what sort of like what inspired you to make this as like a as something for uh, as something to like for other people to access? Um, and of course, how do you, how do you feel? I mean, it seems I can see the connection to energy vampire, but how, um, how, do, how does energy vampire fit into this? Yeah, so I made this because I felt like a lot of creative people actually aren't talking to each other about success. And as a design oriented person, I've gone through a lot of struggles in my own life. And I figured that the best way to do it is actually figure out what you want to do and reverse engineer that into smaller steps. 
I work as a UX designer, so everything is kind of like very structural and kind of step by step. So figuring that all out was like awesome. And especially uh, as an artist as well, it like helps to express yourself and what you do in like a really clear way so that other people can talk to you and you can get grants and funds and art shows and projects that you love. Um, and as a, it's, it's very like exhausting and it, it's definitely an energy suck when you don't know what you do. It's exhausting because you're talking to other people, they don't really get it and you don't really get very far. So the best way to do it is just be really clear on your why and what you do. And that's why I basically created it as a resource just to give back. Um, not, not a lot of people helped me in my life get to where I am, but the people who did, I'm very grateful to and I just want to give back to the community. So that's why I'm creating it. Cool. All right, well, thank you. Um, yeah. We'll give you another round of applause. Uh, I'll check in with our next um, performer, um, Topher. Topher, are you ready? Um, if, if you're ready, give a thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. All right, Tundi. Thanks. Thank you again. Um, uh, put, uh, and we'll head over to uh, Topher. Can you hear me? Mm hmm. So for you, go for it.
Um, Topher, that was great. That was what that was like so ethereal. Like I was, it gave me chills. Um, what, um, what, um, how are you doing it? Like what, um, uh, so whistling, were you whistling? Just like, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah. and then, uh, and then in the drawing, what were you, uh, how are you doing it? Uh, I was, you know, I, I have a few different, uh, I have, I have a camera pointed right above me, uh, right now. Uh, and it's, yeah, so I have a few different feeds. One's coming from here. One's coming from directly up there, uh, feeding both into this program here at the Dora. Mm -hmm. Uh, and just, you know, mucking with it from there. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. So what, um, in your process, what did, what did energy, what did energy vampire mean to you and how, um, how did it, how did it go over the day? How did you come up with this concept? Is this a medium, is this a medium that you've explored before or is it um, is something new? I, um, you know, I, I, I was, I was, you know, thinking about, um, uh, all the things uh, that we were kind of being asked to give up and how necessary that all is. And, you know, it's, it kind of reminded me of, uh, for, uh, it kind of reminded me of one of the great villains I really like is the Queen of the Night from Magic Flute. And she has this scene where she's like, oh yeah, you, you, you like this person, but you need to stab him, stab him, stab him, stab him. And it's like, she's like, no, 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 this is really necessary. And she has this entire song where she, where like, this is really necessary. And so I was like, okay, that makes sense for a thing to base a project around. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, just that song. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, kind of was reverberating and so. I don't know, it kind of started with the idea like uh, you know, I'll start with a light bulb and then I sure, sure. Yeah, as as she's singing it fragments into a bunch of different things, you know. Cool. Um yeah, it were it was very effective. I found it yeah. Again, I said I had I had chills again. <laughs> it was um yeah, it was super arresting. Um yeah, and um um but yeah, this is um um, is this something? So I, I, I feel like <laughs> I've, I've seen, I think, one other performance of yours. I remember it involved puppets in some way. So is this, um, is this a new medium that you like to do with, um, with just with the drawing? I thought, I think it's like, I think it's working. So um, if it is new, <laughs> I, would, I would, I would say you should, you should explore it further. Um, if it's not uh, new, then, then you're on the right track. This is definitely a bunch of stuff. Uh, it's definitely a bunch of stuff I, I've been playing with at ITP for a while. You know, uh, I've got yeah. you know, got my you know Neo Pixel ring that can set light to different colors and you know change what things look like. <laughs> sure. Um, so it's ba basically, you know, it's it's all the crap that I brought home with me, and I was like, well, just try and and live feeding and trying to do some animation is mm -hmm. is basically like. I don't know. It's it's just all the stuff I like to play with, and I thought I had a good chance to play with it. Cool. All right. Well, um, thank you, Topher. One more round of applause, um, and let's check in with Matt and see Matt. Are you um, Matt? Are you ready to go? Yeah. And this is a new Matt, different Matt from the previous Matt. <laughs> um, all right. And so up next is Matt. Uh, Matt is one of our. Um, one of our two finishing performers or performances. Um, and I'm very excited to see it. So Matt, take it away. How are you doing? Are you holding up all right? Are you taking care of yourself? What do you do all day? Do you have a routine? Are you bored? Are you anxious? Do you still have a job? Can you pay your rent? Can you pay your bills? Do you feel resentful? Do you feel angry?
Have you looked out your window today? How many times a day do you look out your window? Do you have a window? Have you left your home today? What's the farthest distance you've traveled from home this week? Is there somewhere else you wish you could be? Do you feel isolated? Are you isolated? Are you alone? Are you with a partner? Are you with a roommate? Is there someone that you wish you were with instead? Do you wish you were alone? Do you feel more connected to people? Do you feel less connected to people? Are you arguing a lot? Are you feeling impatient? Will you still be with your partner when all of this is over? Does it feel good to be alone? Do you feel guilty for enjoying being alone? Do you feel sick? Are people around you getting sick? Have you felt off? Did you already get sick? Are you afraid to tell anyone you're feeling sick? Have you cut your own hair? What are you looking forward to? What were you looking forward to? What gets you out of bed? Can you get out of bed? Can you sleep? Are you having nightmares? Are you enjoying yourself? Are you teaching yourself something new? Are you reinventing yourself? Are you grieving? Are you traumatized? Are you drinking a lot? Are you worried about your drinking? Are you worried about someone else's drinking? Are you getting high? Did you run out of weed? Are you coping? Are you working harder than you've ever had to? Are you worried at how normal this all feels now? Do you wish you could keep doing this? Did you stop talking to anyone? Does someone in your life feel like a burden right now? Do you feel like a burden? How long does an hour feel? How long does a day feel? How long have you been doing this? Are you afraid you're going to lose your job? Are you jealous of people that don't have a job right now? Do you wish you didn't have to work? Do you wish you could be creative, be productive? Are you watching TV? Are you reading a book? Are you cooking? Are you calling friends? Are you calling family? 
Are they calling you? Do you wonder what you do all day? Do you forget what you did yesterday? Do you forget what you have to do tomorrow? Do you forget what day it is? How are you doing today? Are you holding up all right? Are you doing okay? How are you? Um, Matt, that was fantastic. Um, um, Matt, if you could, could you? <laughs> I just have a few questions to ask you, of course. But um, um, uh, hey, can you see me? Yes. Hey, um, Matt, that was incredible. That was like that was extremely affecting. Like I, I was, I felt deeply moved um, at many points in the in the piece. Um, and, um, um, <laughs> you know, I think it like, it also like brought to mind something that I hadn't totally been cognizant of. And I don't remember exactly the wording of the question, but it was something along the lines of, um, like, um, are you, are you comfortable with this? Or like, are you, are you surprised by how normal this feels? Followed by another question, which is like, not so much, do you not want this to end, but like, do you, um, uh, I don't remember, it was something along those lines. And like, I, yeah, it was something that I had been thinking quite recently um, as like a weird feeling I was having, which which were not so much that I'm happy with the situation at hand, but just that it, I have, I have reached a point of like normalcy within it where um, I, and I, I don't know if like this is true of, of everybody, but um, I think it's true of many people of like once you reach a particular point in your life where you're sort of comfortable with your day to day, um, then you don't, um, then sort of like any disruptions might seem like a little bit unwelcome. And so I was thinking a little bit about like what's going to change when quarantine ends. And I was, you know, there's like a little bit of thought in my mind of like, well, I'm gonna have to adapt to like all these, <laughs> to like all the normal ways of living that I used to have. And like now I have these, um, these particular behaviors and particular um, routines that I've gotten into that I'll have to break, um, which I'm very happy about breaking. But it, but it is something. It is a break from from the routine. So, um, how did you? How did you? So narrow. How did you narrow into that feeling when you were making this work? Sorry, what was the question? I didn't hear the last part. Oh, how did? How did you? How did you narrow into that feeling when you're making this work? Um, you know, like I don't know how long it's. <laughs> I don't know how long I've been doing this. It feels like it's been like six weeks or seven weeks. You know. And yeah. like, these are questions I've been asking myself and I see people around me asking and like, um, you know, there was that feeling for a while when this all started, like that there was that everybody's using the word of pause, we're going to pause and then we can inherent in that is the idea that we unpause and everything goes back to normal. And the last few weeks has really felt mm -hmm. like, oh, we're this, there's no unpause from this anymore. This is breeding new realities, new ways of living, um, new social and cultural and like really painful traumatic things that we're going to have to adjust to. Um, and so like, and, and kind of in responding to the prompt from today too, like, it's just like, these are the things that drain me of so much energy is asking these questions, worrying about them, um, feeling confusion about what feels good right now, what feels bad right now, like how to connect with people right now. Yeah, completely. I feel like, um, yeah, so many of these questions were ones that I, I, I had like immediate answers to and also felt like um, in answering them were like very revealing of, um, of truths that I had maybe been ignoring. Um, 
And so, um, uh, you know, I've seen I've seen a, a fair bit of your work, and I, I feel like the something that I like so much about it is that this three D um, is that something about the three D model of your body um, and the use of your body in in digital space, like creates this like defamiliarization where it makes me it makes me it makes me take a step back. It's almost like a kind of like a cybernetic thing of like. I'm taking a step back from my experience of like seeing you do something because it's seeing like um, sort of a representation of you do something. And um, yeah, so for my last question for you is, um, is that something that you think about as, as a strategy um, in this use of your body? Um, or is it, um, oh, Matt, did you just disappear? <laughs> Matt, are you still there? Or you have you have you uh, disappeared? Uh, well, Matt Matt was scared off by my <laughs> by my question apparently. So um, um, yeah, so I'll give I'll give another round of applause for Matt. Um, and um, with that, uh, oh Matt Matt, oh Matt is back. So um, Matt, did you hear the end of my question? I'm sorry, I didn't. Um, oh, <laughs> something crazy was going on. Don't worry about it. Um, you know, it can but it can it wait. Like crazy again. <laughs> um, is oh. it is it how are things? Okay. Right. I'll, well, okay, I'll, I'll I'll ask it. So something something is just sort of like in presenting your body as a 3D avatar, something in that like makes me as a and as observer step back um, and take your performance in a different light. And it's sort of like, and it's sort of like in a way that removes me and allows me to have like an extra layer of consideration to it. And so, is that something that you think about in your work, or is that something that um, you intentionally play with? Sorry, I just had to close my window. It seemed like a, I didn't miss to get the rest of your question. So, okay. uh, no, I'm just a disembodied voice, but <laughs> I appreciate. The, the thought you put in your question, I didn't hear though. Sure, don't worry about it. All right, we can we can table it. Um, this is something that um can be can be addressed in the in the in the digital green room, um as it were. So um, all right. So I actually misspoke when I said that Matt, you are one of the last two performers. You're in fact one of the last three performers. So um, we have um, I, yeah. So our next performer is Dan. Um, so let's check quickly with Dan. Dan, are you ready? You ready? Okay, great. All right, one more round of applause for Matt, and then we will go to Dan. All right, Dan. Um, uh, that was very fun. I will say it was very short. Um, so <laughs> I was I was unprepared for uh, for it to end. And I uh, but um, so what? Um, um, Dan, do you want to talk a little bit about what you um, what you were doing? Um, it seemed quite cool, but I but um, I'm curious to learn more. Yeah. So what I wanted to do was kind of express the chaos I've been feeling and then kind of like combine to a meditative feeling at the end because things have just kind of been crazy but then good and the energy's been better. I had a much bigger thing planned but I kept having so many technical, technical difficulties because the audio tool I'm using is so intensive. So I had to like make it really short and I, I will admit I cheated a bit. I recorded a video because every time I tried to stream it, 
<laughs> it would like crash my computer and the audio. So I just was like, okay, I'm about to go on. I'm just gonna make a 30 second video and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's very funny. I didn't even, yeah. I, to be honest, I didn't notice that it was a video. And yeah. uh, I just thought that um, that was an element of you of your live performance. Um, so, um, so that, um, <laughs> yeah, that's fun. That's a really creative solution of dealing with. I know you. I know we didn't. We didn't. We didn't give the performers a lot of time to make these pieces. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I appreciate the technical difficulties. But um, yeah, um, yeah, that's quite. That's quite an inventive solution. Um, yeah. So um, you, you you answered sort of what what energy vampire means to you. But do you have? Um, Hmm. Do you, I, I'm, uh, so I'm also, I'm a little bit curious exactly what you were doing and like what the, what the tech was. Um, sure. So this is actually experience that's meant to be listened to with headphones. Uh, what I was doing, I was like starting the sound in the middle and then started slowly panning it around using like a binaural encoder, which basically makes sound appear in any direction on your headphones. And I'm really interested in this expression with the new era of everyone sitting at home, listening to digital streaming. I think spatial audio has a lot of interesting ways of enjoying music at home. So I kind of wanted to explore with that. And I wanted to make a much bigger musical instrument that can um, deal with that. But I was limited by um, just time, but I want to continue this project and you know, do like multi-channel audio condensed into headphones kind of like things. I'm also using analog synthesizers like software replicas, this, this Buchler replicant, which sounds amazing, but it's very CPU intensive and that's why I couldn't stream at the same time. But it sounds great and there's tons of options. Sure. Yeah. Um... Cool. Well, thank you. One last, one last thing. I can't help but notice how sunny it is there compared to yeah. dark purple, purple hued New York City. So, uh, could yeah. you just tell us briefly where you are? Yeah, I'm in, in LA right now. Um, the oh, sky is <laughs> very blue because there's no cars on the road, so it's a nice place to be. Um, so I've been getting a lot of sunlight, which has been nice. That was yeah. kind of like also what I wanted to express in this. I don't know, like energy from the sun. I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, well, let's see. Um, uh, let's see if the next performers are ready. Um, uh, yeah. Carrie and Tong, are you ready to go? Yeah, we're ready. Okay, wonderful. All right. Uh, another round of applause for Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Um, and then I'll hand, hand it off to our last um, uh, performance of the evening, which I'm very excited for. Um, it is called Happy English Test um, by Carrie and Tong. All right, you're like, go. Welcome. You are now entering the assessment system of the Happy English Test under the instruction of the Something Department of Education. Happy English Incorporated just launched this new educational assessment system for people who are preparing themselves to spark joy in their everyday English communications. Happy English Incorporated qualified happy English speaker should be someone who keeps an unswerving faith that happiness is true, i.e. in their room without a roof throughout their life. A certificate of happy English speaker will be issued to you when you have successfully passed the test with a score above 80. Without a roof, the following test is designed to assess your communication and writing skills on campus happy English. Each session has a different guideline. Please listen carefully before proceeding. Please now present your happy English ID for verification. Each session has a Place different your Happy ID English Test ID card within the green box. Before proceeding, please now present your Happy English ID for verification. Place your Happy English Test ID card within the green box. Welcome, Carrie S I J I A Wang. Get ready for the test now. Read the sentences out loud. Hi, Professor Welcome. Adams. Hello. My name Get is Larry. 
Now. My. Read the sentences out loud. I heard that you place students in internships for various university programs. I. Yes, I am interested assist the students internship, internship at the university art yes, museum. I, the, but just Most saw announcement on museum at website. Museum are all but on museum. I want to museum work after I graduate. Yes, I, out of state. I, I am not interested library in library work. I for student volunteers. I am not sure that yeah. is what I want. At library are planning at at an exhibition exhibition of. But it would be something I to put also on my resume. I warned you. Warn beforehand. Warn that this is only. Why don't you listen and repeat the sentences? Hi, I would like to join the math club. If hi, are, I would like to join the math club. Listen and repeat the sentences. I have talked to some of my friends who are club Great members. Activity. I have talked year. to some of my friends who are some club members. They especially what enjoyed the club's field the trips club. last year. They especially enjoyed. The club's the club. field trips last the year. Year. I volunteer to tutor some primary school students in math on Mondays. I volunteer to tutor some primary school students in math. Is it okay if I only come on Thursdays? Is it okay if I only come on Mondays, Thursdays, Thursdays? The Is tutoring it counts toward the community service, service requirement for graduation and Mondays are for math, so I have to be there. So I yes. have to be there Mondays. It math. should be okay because even if you can only write one essay on the topic of medium specificity in the avant-garde cinema. I think you will still enjoy the cinema. This is a good start. This is nothing to show what you know about the structure of the U.S. government. Nice you sentence. Hard. Interesting point. Can you sure remember it on that? Yes, government. Keep up very more. This is great. Amazing. Keep it up. Congratulations. Your happy vibe has been proved and we are all impressed with your positive energy. You have passed the test. Congratulations. You are now your a certified happy English speaker on campus. We appreciate the efforts you we made to not only test. speak good English, but speak happy you are English. You are now a certified happy English we speaker more on people campus. like you to bring us positive energy in the, the English speaking world. Not only speak good English, but speak happy English. We need more people like you to bring us positive energy in the English speaking world. Yay. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can hear you. Um, thank you, both of you. That was that was fantastic. Um, it also seems like very, um, it's uh, it's like very organizationally ambitious for the time, <laughs> given the timer. <laughs> um, so I, of course, I'd like to know a little bit about how this collaboration worked and how you were able to accomplish so much um, in this time span. Um, because I mostly do work that's related to tests. So I already have a lot of <laughs> coding done uh, for this project, mm -hmm. but we just need to reappropriate it um, for this purpose. And usually mm -hmm. I work 
um, my work is more dystopian and um, sad. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this time we just want to do something really fun and mm -hmm. lighthearted. And Tom is uh, exploring using avatars and machine learning recently. So this yeah. is a so this yeah. is like a small deep fake demo that I found online. And so that's why we um, record some um, <laughs> we record some videos of us reading the guidelines and then just have it to be deep fake uh, to pro to go through the deep fake process. And then we just mount it to some stock images that we found. Um, cool. It's very, it, I found it very, it was definitely very, <laughs> it was super funny. I, um, I, you know, I, I, um, I, something about like seeing like sort of like picture puppets, especially of like the stock image picture puppet. Um, it's, it's extremely humorous. I think it's like a really effective tool. Um, yeah. And Carrie, you sort of answered my, my next question, which is, I feel like, yeah, a lot of your work has been about um, um, uh, much more fo focused around dystopian themes and sort of like looking in the in the mid future um, dystopia that we'll all find ourselves in in the next thirty to forty to fifty years. Um, but um, uh, this one seems like it could be placed in that same future. Um, like a lot of the ideas and a lot of the the technologies were the same, but it did have a very different feel. And so. Um, um, <laughs> I guess you did already answer the question that I wanted to ask, which was why why this different feel and but but maybe more um, how does this speak to your work um, in the future? And I mean to to say that your work always has like a glint of humor to it. There's always a little bit of there's always something a bit funny to be found in it. And Tong, I actually think this is true of yours too. There's always something like. There's always something like that like lifts up my spirits, even if it's around a depressing topic. Um, and so, how how did you find working in working in um, uh, working sort of in a different like effective space? Um, when I like when we're talking about the future, we're actually talking about the present. Um, when you say like thirty years, fifty years, but I'm actually thinking about the now. And mm, yeah, totally. And because there are so many energy vampires, <laughs> to echo the theme, <laughs> around us right now, um, I feel I would need that bit of humor, mm -hmm. that bit of dark humor um, to keep us going and still make us feel like individuals um, that are still thinking and feeling, uh, speaking of feeling, <laughs> <laughs> and adjacent. It's coming out <laughs> in two mm -hmm. weeks. Yeah, um, this is a great segue. So um, Carrie is my co um, co manager of Adjacent, um, and so this is perfect because I was about to plug, and now we can plug together. Um, Adjacent is having our next issue, issue number seven. Feelings uh, will be coming out uh, mid May, um, so keep your eyes peeled. Um, visit http colon slash slash adjacent dot press um, every single day and make sure that it's the first thing you do when you wake up every morning uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I guarantee that everything in your life will go perfectly if that's what you do um so <laughs> um um with that um i think we can give the both of you um if you uh, do you have it before i let you go do you have any last words last words um <laughs> Check out Jason and uh, check out uh, Tong Wu's website and Tong Wu created what is what is it Tong Wu Media dot com. <laughs> Tong Wu Media dot com. Uh, uh, visit that <laughs> after you visit Jason Um All right. Well, a round of applause for you both. Thank you again. Um, and that brings us to the end of our performance for the evening. Um, I would like to say a few thank yous. Um, before I say that, I, of course, I would like to say that um, if you're only just joining us here at the end of the uh, at the end of the evening, um, this is this has been um, Performer Jam, an evening of five um, five-ish minute performances. 
all made within the spans of a day, along the theme of an energy vampire, um, hosted by the adjacent Journal of Emerging Media, uh, run out of the Interactive Telecommunications Program, NYU, uh, in collaboration with Culture Hub. Um, all right, now my thank yous. I would like to thank, um, and you can you can imagine in your mind's eye that maybe they're joining me here in my living room and standing behind me and taking a bow. Um, but I would like to thank uh, Simone Sal Salvo and Gabriela Garcia, my uh, co-organizers of this event. Um, I would like to thank the team at Culture Hub, especially Billy, Sangman, and Maddie. Um, I would like to, of course, thank all the performers for giving us their time, uh, for putting in this work, and for putting and for putting together these uh, really amazing and inspiring performances in this, it, both in the span of just a few hours and in this in this um, terrible <laughs> terrible time we find ourselves in. Um, so a big round of applause for all of the performers. Um, and last and last and not least, of course, I would like to thank all the viewers out there who've been who, who've been watching and tuning in. Um, so a round of applause for everybody who's watching. Um, and with that, um, I think we're good to end. I feel like when one last thought is just like, like the end of any Zoom call or um, live stream or any kind of thing. So awkward. So. Um, I um I'll just disappear and, and leave it at that. All right, thank you everybody. Have a good night. Bye.